What's going on YouTube? Sean here and welcome back to another edition of my DC Combo Reviews and in this video we're going to talk about Batman Superman World's Finest issue number 31. This one is written by Mark Wade with the artwork done by like Adrian Gutierrez who is taking over for Dan Mora which does make me sad because Dan Mora's artwork on World's Finest has been like absolutely incredible from the start of this thing. I know he's going to be jumping on to one of the more premier titles Justice League Unlimited and he's also going to be working on Superman with uh, Joshua Williamson, which I'm just like, man, it's like, it's kind of the monkey's paw effect. On the one hand, I get him on these other books, but on the other hand, I kind of lose him on World's Finest. So a sad moment for sure. Uh, I'm going to miss his artwork because like that was always like one of my favorite aspects. Every issue looked great. Um, but you know, like we still get some good quality writing from Mark Wade and the artwork here by Adrian Gutierrez, who I'm not as familiar with, does look pretty good, but it's it's not gonna quite hold a candle to what Dan Mora was doing. I'll I'll say that right out the get-go because like I said, I mean, but then again, uh, I don't know anyone else at DC whose artwork is holding a candle to what Dan Mora was doing. Like I probably my favorite artist at DC right now. So uh yeah, but still looks pretty good regardless. But uh yeah, so this one is set at the Justice League satellite, not quite labeled the Watchtower just yet. This is set somewhere in the past. Uh, various members of the League are up there for the solar eclipse thing. Uh, we find out that, like, uh, as we'll see in a second, the eclipse happens, and then various members of the League get possessed, you know, Black Canary, Green Arrow, and uh, Green Lantern. And we find out 24 hours earlier, uh, we're through, a, like, a, like, a framing device through Clark Kent writing a story about how the Justice League was trying to build the first ever solar-powered city, so that way it can power, like, up to, like, everyone for hundreds of miles and whatnot, and, uh, we also find out that the person who's working on this is a Dr. Gordon, as Robin kind of explains here, which is the character of Eclipso, who I gotta admit, I'm not really that familiar with. Uh, I can't remember the last time Eclipso has really appeared in anything, but I wouldn't consider myself an expert on the character, so I'm just letting you know right at the get-go, I'm not too familiar with this character so but robin kind of recaps it in a way that feels kind of exposition -y. like would the, wouldn't the characters kind of already know this but it's kind of a way to kind of tell the readers in about like oh hey remember eclipso you mean the ancient spirit of wrath who possesses dr gordon goes on a city destroying murder spree whenever there's an eclipse that dr gordon to whom the justly is handing dr light's old villain equipment where on earth would i be asking about that so yeah i mean that feels if you're not familiar with the character, it's helpful for someone like me who's not as familiar with the character, but would Robin really be saying that to Batman? Uh, just It just felt like very exposition dumpy. But like I said, for me, it, it works, but just in the context of like the dialogue does not really sound all that, I guess, natural. It feels kind of, oh, hey, remember this exposition thing? You know this, Batman. Of course Batman knows that he's Batman. But uh, yeah, so like I said, it's kind of a, a double-edged sword. But uh, I think, like I said, for someone who's not as familiar with the character, I kind of needed that refresher. So uh, thanks, but um, it's still, you know, sounds a little bit iffy at times. But hey, it's a character hasn't appeared in who knows how long, so getting a showcasing. But uh, yeah, so he's there, and then he kind of grabs a hold of something, and then Eclipso once again takes charge. Uh, basically, he was kind of sealed away in some sort of, like, diamond of sorts, and um, they thought it was kind of, well, you're like, okay, we'll keep an eye on him. We know this character shows up during eclipses, so we got to be extra cautious. But eventually he does break free and starts to reign supreme. And he decides to kind of build this weapon to kind of take down the Justice League satellite. And is also possessing members of the League. And they're fighting with each other. And Red Tornado gets caught up in the mix. And it's seemingly everyone is kind of defeated. Release the satellite is blown sky high, which is a pretty cool image. Uh, Red Tornado managed to escape, and at the end of the issue, he confronts the uh, Justice Society to come in to help out. So it's cool that we're bringing in the JSA. I, I always like the JSA. Um, I think they really were the first superhero team at DC before the Justice League, if I'm not mistaken, off the top of my head. I don't know. Someone will probably roast me in the comments for that, uh, assuming there is going to be a lot of comments on this issue. But uh, yeah, still a pretty good issue overall. The artwork I did like. Uh, obviously, I'm still going to miss Dan Mora, but I thought, like I said, as somebody who kind of is coming in, I don't know if they're taking over this book full time. It still looked good, still very akin to kind of the style I'm used to with this book. Because uh, even then, like Dan Mora didn't draw every issue. I know Travis Moore did some stuff as well. But uh, for Adrian Gutierrez, I thought did a pretty good job, like mixing into kind of the style I've been used to on this book for so long and bringing in a character like Eclipso, who, like I said, I'm not really all that familiar with and kind of catching us up uh, with some of the dialogue and that to just say, hey, this is who it is. If you're not as familiar, like, OK, that was helpful for me. And then, uh, of course, bringing in the JSA at the end, looking forward to seeing what they do. And now that the uh, Justice League satellite is blown up, I think that's also going to help set the stage for when Mark Wade brings back the uh, the um, the Watchtower 
in the upcoming Justice League Unlimited book, which I am looking forward to reading. I think Mark Waid on that title is a, a pretty good thing, and of course Dan Mora. So uh, for somebody who's really loved what they've done together with World's Finest, having them take over in kind of the more modern settings, I think that's going to be some pretty good, exciting stuff. And I'm really looking forward to Justice League Unlimited. I've been wanting a Justice League book for quite a while, and it's been crazy how DC kind of went so long without one. But with that creative team, I think it's going to be some really solid stuff. So we'll see where they go from there. But uh, in terms of this issue, I thought it was pretty decent. Uh, there are no bad issues of World's Finest. Yeah, some appeals a little bit exposition heavy, like I said. But for somebody, as I've mentioned several times already, who's not as familiar with Eclipso, it's a good way to kind of recap the audience on who the character is because they haven't appeared in so long. And uh, if they didn't do that, I'd be even more lost. So uh, yeah, so that's good. Get some of the other characters mixed in a little bit and bring in the JSATs at the end. Uh, it should be pretty fun overall. So uh, once again, World's Finest continues its 31 for, actually like 32 for 32, if you count like the annuals of no bad issues in this entire series. I mean, that's that still is like a really good track record. I mean, you're not going to get anything bad with the World's Finest book. It's always going to deliver something uh, pretty interesting for the most part. So yeah, but what did you think of Batman Superman World's Finest issue number 31? Did you like it? Did you dislike it? Post your comments down below. Be sure to like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe to your channel for content. Hit that bell for notifications. Uh, I will be back tomorrow with some more DC comic book related videos. I know I'm a little bit late to kind of get this one out there, but if I don't get it done, like, first thing, like, Wednesday or something, I'm just kind of like, eh, it can wait till next week. So, some weeks are just like that, where it just kind of takes forever to kind of get something out, but other days where it's like, okay, we're, we're on a mission, let's get things done, so... I don't know, what do you all prefer? you want me to kind of like rush to try and get them done? Or would you prefer just like, eh, you can space them out a little bit, Sean. We don't care sort of thing. So, but the algorithm, people by this point are just like, eh, I'm not going to like look at that issue. Like, unless it's like day one or whatnot. So, uh, yeah. But uh, anyways, that's all I have to say. Uh, take care now. Bye-bye then. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.